Hey, what's going on everyone? Luca, your Studio DMI. Today we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into Lift 3 from Acoustic Audio and Studio DMI. We're extremely proud about this plugin. This is a big upgrade for us and a big update versus Lift 1 and 2. We kind of took uh, a lot of notes based on feedback from you guys and we tried our best to squeeze the best into this plugin. I mean, um, well, I'm a huge fan. The fact that I'm involved with the product doesn't mean anything. I just love the fact that the same approach we had on Color EQ, which is speed and sound and less visual and more use your ears, we did on Lift 3. So let's dive together into this plugin. And uh, I just wanna, instead of doing like a, a, a typical tutorial, I just wanna highlight first what I like best, what I use most, most and then second, just answer a couple of questions about some new functionality of Lift3. Follow me. We are going to use audio that has no in-the-box processing. So we did summing, we captured back this mix uh, with ton of bedroom, enough to use additional clipping, or additional compression, or EQ. Uh, we're gonna start on routing number one, which is the flow the plugin left to right. We have the input gain, into the plugin, we have saturation, we have the low shelf, high shelf, we have the compression and clipping. So very traditional, very typical approach. Now, the big difference between Lift 3 and the, the Lift 2 or Lift 1, that now we can actually change the routing. Imagine have like a virtual patch bay that we can patch uh, those different module internally inside of Lift in a different position with a different flow. What this means is, if we decide strategically to compress before EQ, we can do that, but also we can EQ into a compressor. So this is like a big deal because now optimizing inside of one single plugin without getting out of the flow and the sound of the plugin, we can try a different solution really quick. All right, let's do a quick test of a traditional approach using lift on routing number one. Uh, let's get fairly loud and then let's see what kind of option we have now. Let's do it. Okay, so um, my approach usually starts from the clipping point and then I boost EQ in or I open the side in uh, listening the clip sound and I hope it makes sense. So my goal is to see what level I want to go and then I make some EQ curve decision or saturation decision or filter into that. So the great things about having an high pass, low pass filter uh, is the fact that essentially I'm doing in some way a little bit of pull text style effects where I'm shaving a little bit the, the bottom and then I can just do a little shelf where I can go up on the, almost on the, on the lower mid range or on the low end based on the key of the track or based on the vibe of the track. Um, without get booming with a lot of sustain on the 30, 40 hertz, they kill also a lot of edge room. So that was the idea of to have a high quality high pass and low pass filter in. Um, when I go for more conservative type of clipping, I'm staying on mode three, which is a between a hard clipping and soft clipping, right on the edge. And I'm able to get fairly loud without feel the track kind of like uh, being shaved too much would be limited too much. I don't feel limiting in this way. Um, and then if I look the waveform, I'm not destroying the entire waveform. I retain a, enough level between the average and the peak. I just, just squeeze a little bit 
but I'm not killing entirely. So that's more a traditional approach. Um, and then again, I'm using Reddit number one, which is the flow of the plugin left to right. Uh, there is a certain option that I like to use, uh, which is, for example, automation on the, on the clip level. So traditionally on an arrangement of the track, you wanna get maybe a little bit more dynamic on the build, a little bit more in your face on the drop. And then I can automate the actual a clipper instead of a gain. And then if you look on, on the DAW, now we have a level automation on the clipping. So this allows us to do interesting things like build when we give back dynamic on the build and we squeeze dynamics on the drop, for example. Anyway, let's check the option that we have now to clip just the mid, the mid alone. Let's go on a, maybe a second on the second drop here. <laughs> On the input meter, you can tell we're eating about minus two uh, peak level. And then of course, on the output, we are clipped to zero. Now we have an option. If we are looking to add additional plugin post lift to have an output gain, the output gain, it's post clipping. That means is reducing the output gain. We're not taking away clipping. We just simply imagine you're taking the waveform, you cut the waveform, you lower the waveform post clipping. Very effective in case of, for example, uh, you're looking to do a little bit of an EQ curve with your favorite, you know, uh, analog EQ or, or digital EQ post clipping might be the case. In that case, you just simply lower the level, you have a clip sound or you have like a control sound and then you have your building, you have edge room that you can use for additional EQ, for example. So the output gain is very, uh, is very good. It's also great in case you want to A and B without get tricked by loudness. So essentially you can um, push the level 10 dB, do some clipping, lower the output to match the input. So that way you can really feel the sound of the clipper. So now back on the routing mode, which is that's kind of like to me the little secret sauce of this plugin. Now let's check the option of routing number two. Right number two, we're gonna place the compressor before the EQ. This means a lot. It means that we can essentially change the envelope, contain and, and just retain some control on dynamics in the EQ post. So we can have a shelf after a more compressed sound. Um, I'm gonna use the compressor number four, which is the new one. It's one of my favorite. Let's try it. One uh, little uh, tip, we have four compressors. The best way for me to choose your compressor is to retain the same uh, level of makeup gain. So let's say 3 dB of makeup gain. And then every time we switch compressor, make sure to match the makeup gain. So if you look on the meter under the side amount, you're gonna see different level of compression. So my average usually is 3 dB. So if a different compressor will give you 2 dB of compression and you are pushing 3 on the makeup gain, do an extra dB just to make sure that you're retaining the same level of compression and makeup gain. This will also allow it to have the clipper to kind of behave in the same way all the time. Let's go on a part, there's maybe a lot of pianos and let's see how we feel when we open the side. Okay, so that's number two. So we place the compressor before. When we go on number three, 
very interesting. We can start clipping. So this means we can raise the RMS level of the track. And then after clipping, we can do, we can do compression, saturation, and EQ. So we compress, we saturate, we EQ. Um, let's try that. So check the waveform. So without, we have big peaks, uh, a lot of space. So there's like the crest factor is really kind of very low. And then we go control, but still retaining a lot of dynamics. That's really cool. <laughs> On the top, so if you do a low pass filter, you can we shave 18k and up. So we can kind of like do again a little bit of like the pull tech style effects where we are shaving and we are pushing. So let's see that. Pay attention on the high ass. Let's talk for a minute about the difference between lift mix and lift master. Sound the same. We have literally the same uh, input response, the same sample, the same sound, but we have a different range. So we have plus and minus 5 dB on the master on the output, plus and minus 5 dB on the input, versus the mix we have plus and minus 24 dB. So you don't want to use 24 dB of gain on the master, but very good on kick, snare, everything you need to do like big lift, lifting, exactly on sound on individual sound that might be good um, same level of low shelf high shelf which is 4 db starting from zero so four up um, and then uh, yeah so i think that's what it is so you have more gain essentially on the mix this is luca here studio dmi uh, thanks for joining on this tutorial please if you want to dig a little deeper do your own work download the actual manual of the plugin from the Acoustica website. Enjoy it. See you next time.